Public, uh, Dell and Lapa have been very, very generous and uh, really delightful partners to work with. We've featured such events as Ralph Metzner, Dennis McKenna, Robert Tyndall, and Susanna Bustos. And uh, this series is really kind of part of this sort of exploration of consciousness studies, the way that it kind of relates to indigenous cultures, their folklore, the ethnobotany involved, and as well as survivability in the 21st century. Um, there's a focus on sustainable models of living, an analysis on the impact of technology and capitalism on culture and the environment. So we're really very, very delighted tonight to be partnering with Survival International, which is a really very important, very fantastic organization. It's a nonprofit that champions the causes of tribal peoples all over the world. Um, this event uh, is celebrating the release of a new book that's been uh, published by Harvard University Press. It's called The Falling Sky, Words of a Yanomami Shaman. Uh, with us tonight, we're very, very honored to have Davi Kapanawa, who is a Yanomami tribal spokesperson and shaman, uh, together with his translator, Fiona Watson, who is a field director of Survival International. Uh, we're celebrating this really fantastic, very remarkable uh, first-person account of the Yanomami culture, of the Brazilian Amazon, its history, and its fight for survival. So I'd like to take this moment to welcome Leila Batman-Galic, who is the U.S. Office Coordinator for Survival International, with some opening statements. We will have a signing later. Uh, Avi will be very happy to sign books here. You can, of course, purchase them in the lobby. Uh, give a warm welcome now to Leila. Thank you so much for being with us today. Um, I'd like to give a special thanks to City Lights and the Emerald Tablet for organizing and hosting this wonderful program. Um, as Peter already said, I'm Leila batman -Gleach. I work in the US office here in San Francisco of Survival International. Um, we are an international tribal rights organization with six other offices. Um, and this year, we're actually celebrating our 45th year of advocating for tribal people's rights around the world. So tonight, we are here to celebrate and discuss Davi Kopanawa's historic new book, The Falling Sky, the first and only book authored by Yanomami Shaman. Davi Kopanawa is a Yanomami Shaman and spokesman who led the long-running campaign in partnership with Survival International to protect the Yanomami territory in Brazil. Just for a little background context, um, during the 1950s and 60s, Davi watched his parents die from new diseases brought in by outsiders. In the 80s, when thousands of gold miners invaded the Yanomami territory, 20% um, of the tribes in Brazil succumbed to illnesses to which they had little immunity. The deaths of his loved ones prompted Davi's lifelong commitment to fighting for his people's rights. The fight, this fight was most recently culminated in this book, The Falling Sky. Today, Davi lives in his community called Watukiri, which means the Mountain of the Wind. And he is the president of Hutukara, the Yanomami Association, which he founded in 2004. The Yanomami are one of the largest relatively isolated tribes in South America. They live in the rainforests and the mountains of, the north, of northern Brazil and southern Venezuela. And their combined territory is the largest area of forest under indigenous protection equivalent to the size of the state of Missouri. Today, the population is about 35,000, with 19,000 in Brazil and about 16,000 in Venezuela. They live by hunting, gathering, fishing, and growing crops in large gardens cleared by the forest. They use approximately 500 species of rainforest plants to, for food, building materials, hunting poisons, and medicines. Shamanism plays a fundamental part in Yanomami life. The shamanic spirits are images of the ancestors of human beings and animals from the beginning of humanity. For the Yanomami of the Brazilian Amazon, the spirit world is a fundamental part of life. Every creature, rock, tree, mountain has a spirit. Unfortunately, mining, ranching, and a total lack of healthcare options threaten the Yanomami. 
There are more requests for mining corporations to mine in the Yanomami territory than in any other indigenous territory in Brazil. These requests, which number of over 650, cover over half of the Yanomami's land. And now there are still thousands of illegal gold miners on Yanomami land. For thousands of years, the Yanomami have thrived in the rainforests of South America. And now they're struggling as the government fails to protect them from criminal invasions, attacks, and disease. Davi Copanawa needs our help, and we hope this book helps spread his message. Fiona Watson is Survival International's Field and Research Director, and for her, tomorrow actually marks her 24th year fighting for tribal people's rights in Survival International. So we will begin with, oh, and also, as you know, she'll provide translation for Dami during the evening. Um, so we'll begin with Fiona, who will read a few passages from the book. Ah, okay, I'm sorry. So we'll begin with Davi, who will um, give us some words. Then Davi, then Fiona will read a few passages from the book. And then we'll open it up to questions from the audience. Thank you. Bem, na pampa, a marca é uma que está aqui. Estão aqui. É... Boa noite a todos. Com a seleção ao público que vieram aqui. É... Eu estou muito contente. E. É... Quero agradecer a todos de vocês que organizaram aqui nessa casa. Pra, eu venho aqui para encontrar vocês. É muito difícil para mim, aqui é uma cidade grande, é um, mora muito longe. É, o primeiro que eu vou dar. Meu nome é Davi Copenal Yanomami. Eu sou presidente da Rutucara Associação Yanomami. Também sou um bajé, curandeira, e que eu cura meus, meus parentes, família, filhos, as aldeias. Well, good evening to everybody. Um, you here are the public, and I'm very happy uh, to see you here. And I also want to thank everybody in this house, the people who organized this event. Um, I've come here to meet you, and it's very difficult because this is a very big city, and I live very far away. My name is Davi Kokanawa Yanomami, and I'm president of the Yanomami Hutukara Association. Uh, I'm also a shaman and a healer and I cure my people my, and my family and my children. Então, eu, eu moro na minha comunidade, a longe da cidade. É mais ou menos, é, para pegar avião pequeno, é uma hora e trinta minutos para me chegar na cidade. E o meu, o meu povo Yanomami é, mora em uma, uma terra única, como Roraima, Amazonas, que, que eu lutei para ter uma, uma terra para os Yanomami continuar a viver e ficar em paz. I live in my community, which is very far from the city. To get there, you have to get a little plane, and it takes about one and a half hours for me to come out of there to the city. My Yanomami people live in one territory in two states in Brazil, Roraima and Amazonas states. I fought for this land, for the Yanomami, so that they could continue to live there in peace. So, uh, a terra... 
Terra Yanomami já está homologado. O governo federal homologou o ano 1992. Foi homologado e registrado e assinado pelo governo, mas não está garantido. The Anomami Territory has been registered by the federal government. This was done in 1992. It was mapped out, registered and signed off. However, it's not guaranteed. <coughs> Infazores, que chama, que nós indígenas chama Craioá, e homem branco, ele é, tá, está voltando, voltando para para um, invadir outra vez as pessoas que 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 invade a terra indígena chama caripeiro fazendeiro os trabalhadores rurais os pescadores madeireiro e um, o governo que faz a estrada está dentro da terra indígena e outros que estão lutando, o governo federal está lutando para invadir outra vez e nós estamos lutando e contra a mineração terra e anumano. So, uh, the invaders, people who we call Kaiwa, white people, are returning to invade our area again. Uh, and that these people who are invading our land are gold miners, gold panners, cattle ranchers, rural workers, fisher people and loggers. And the government is now trying to build a road again inside the indigenous territory. So the federal government is fighting to invade our land again and we are fighting against them and their plans to open it up to large mining companies. Então eu vou, eu vou deixar bem claro para vocês é sobre a mineração. O governo federal, o governo o mundo inteiro, eles 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 estão aliados. Muitos empresários está no olho da, da Amazônica. O mundo inteiro está querendo meter mão à riqueza da terra e no mar. E por isso, nós não estamos preocupados, porque o mine a máquina, ele destrói tudo. Ele, ele destrói tudo e a derruba as árvores e a também quebrando as montanhas, fazer a, a estrada de ferro para poder transportar a mercadoria que ele vai extrair na terra Yanomami. Então, isso para nós é muito perigoso, muito perigoso, porque eles, a, 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 o, o minério, a mineração, ele leva problema, problema para me pôr Yanomami, o problema é que é doença, doença que nunca, que nunca chegou e também o pessoal, pessoal ruim que mata indígena e que maltrata o meu, com, com indígena e nesse ponto nós estamos preocupados e a mineração não vai trazer benefício com ninguém para, para os Yanomami. Só vai trazer problema, briga e destruição que vai, vai acontecer daqui para frente. É por isso que estou aqui falando com você, para você ficar fica sabendo esse ano, esse ano que vem, porque o governo, é, exército e a, os deputados, os senadores que estão lutando para poder aprovar aprovar projeto da mineração que o governo que escreveu. So I want to tell all of you here very clearly about the question of the large scale mining. All the governments around the world are allied together 
and together with the businessmen, and they are looking and watching at the Amazon rainforest. All of them want to put their hands into this forest and take out the wealth from the Anamami land. So we are extremely worried about this. Uh, the machines are going to destroy the earth. They're going to rip out the trees, cut them up, and they're going to break up the mountains. They were put in railways to transport the, the minerals and the ore. This is very dangerous because mining brings many problems to the Anamami. The, the mine, uh, mining will bring in illness, illnesses which we've never had before, and it will also bring in bad people who kill Indians and who mistreat us. Uh, and in, this has happened in the past, so we are very worried, uh, and we know that this large-scale mining will not bring any benefit to the Anamami. So we will be fighting, we are fighting the destruction, and for this reason I am here to tell you about this. Uh, the army and the government, the deputies and the senators in the Congress are all fighting to approve a mining bill to open up our land. Hey, eu é saltar um pouquinho é sobre a saúde. A saúde é importante para todo mundo. Saúde é número um. É prioridade para nós, povo da terra. Não é sobre índio. É para todos a civilização também sobre com as doenças. E a nós e a Numami estão enfrentando é, a saúde que o governo que cuida nosso povo Yanomami é, está deixando muita dificuldade e, é, e falta de, de remédio remédio medicinal do branco que é, o governo ele deixou acostumar usar para ficar bom para curar com a doença de malária pneumonia e a tuberculosa, câncer e outras doenças que está sempre aparecendo lá. Essa doença roda o mundo inteiro, você sabe muito bem. Então nós, a Anumami, está é, lutando para o governo cuidar da nossa saúde. So health is very important for everyone. It's the number one thing, it's a priority for all the peoples of the earth, not just the indigenous peoples. You two here in, in this country, you suffer from diseases. So we, the uh, young mommy people, are facing a health crisis because the government is creating a lot of difficulties. It, uh, it's not providing uh, the medicines we need to, to treat the diseases of the white people. For example, malaria, tuberculosis, cancer, and other diseases which are always appearing. Uh, the government it, it is uh, diseases which go around the world. We, the young mommy, are fighting for the government to look after our health. Bem, eu vou é, acelerar um pouco, que o tempo passa para nós, com os indígenas, não tem horário, para você tem. Tá? Então eu vou falar sobre, sobre a, um livro que chama Quedo do Céu. O Quedo do Céu, no início do mundo, nosso povo Yanomami conta mais de 500 anos passado a terra caiu é por isso que está, é por isso que está dividido o Brasil é, Europa Estados Unidos porque ele caiu ficou um pedaço do longe do outro então eu eu escrevi para mostrar o sabedoria, o conhecimento tradicional do meu povo Yanomami. O povo Yanomami, eles são bom de histórico. O nosso povo Yanomami, é, nós somos ricos da 
rico da histórico, não é dinheiro, a rico da sabedoria, rico da, da histórico, para repassando nossos filhos, para eles continuar usando essa um, o nome, o primeiro, primeiro homem, primeiro indígena que, que viveu, o nome dele é Omam. Omam é uma é um homem especial. É uma um, so uh, we indigenous peoples have no timetable, but I know that you city people, non-Indians have a timetable, so I'm going to wrap up. But I, I, I would like to talk a bit about my book, uh, The Falling Skull. Um, in the beginning of the world, uh, the Yanomami mummy people say, and this is more than 500 years ago, many, many years ago, the Yanomami say that the, the earth fell. So that is why we now have a division between the sky and the earth and between countries like Brazil, Europe and the USA. And just a bit of the earth remained. So I wrote um, this book uh, to show the wisdom and the traditional knowledge of the Yanomami people. The Yanomami people are very good historians and we are extremely rich in our history, in our stories, in our wisdom. We're not rich in money, we're rich in this knowledge. And we pass this knowledge down to our children so that they can continue to use it for generations. And Omami was the first, the creator was the first human being that lived. And Omami is a very special person. Então, o povo Yanomami, ele conhece muito bem a origem da terra. Como, como a terra surgiu. Porque Yanomami não é, é, ele não é novo, eles somos, somos antigos. É por isso que nós pensamos, eu pensei, a mostrar, mostrar o meu, o meu conhecimento tradicional, como eu aprendi com a, com a grande pajé, é, passou reconhecimento para mim. Esse é o livro que eu, que eu pensei para escrever com língua Yanomami, língua um, francês e agora inglês. E eu não gostei antropólogo não índio. Antropólogo só, só vai colher a nossa sabedoria. Antropólogo americano, antropólogo uh, francês, antropólogo japonês, que vai lá, só vai atrás dos índios. Os índios que guardam a sabedoria. Então, eu me decidi fazer o um livro, escrever para vocês, para a... Uh, um, para mostrar o caminho, o conhecimento tradicional, mostrar a cultura terra, cultura floresta, cultura dos rios, as montanhas, os animais, pássaro, que se criou. Então, tendo tá, tá livro, está tudo explicado. Eu queria ensinar para você abrir a sua ideia. So the Yanomami people know about the origins of the earth. They know how it got dirty. The Yanomami people are not a young people. We're a very ancient people. So I thought about sharing my traditional knowledge, which I learned myself from a great shaman. He passed on everything I know to me. So I thought uh, uh, about writing this book, and I, I wrote it. It was done in the Yanomami language first, uh, then it was translated into French, and now it's in English. 
I, I don't like uh, non-indigenous anthropologists. They go in and they collect our traditional knowledge. They come from all sorts of places, from America, from France, from Japan. They only go in after the Indians, the indigenous people who have knowledge. So I decided to write this book for you, to show you the path, the path of our knowledge and our culture, and to show how the earth and the land and the forest and the rivers and the mountains and the birds, how everything was created. All of this is explained in the book because I want to open your ideas. Então, homem saber e anomami, ele é uma quartião do sabedoria que guarda histórico na cabeça, não é livro não, na cabeça, porque nós costuma diferente, assim que que nós o povo Yanomami é, escolher o lugar onde que vai ser guardado a sabedoria da terra. O homem da floresta, ele guarda aqui como como como, como memória da, da do celular, da máquina. Aqui nós temos para não derrubar as florestas, para não para fazer papel. Então nós aprendemos assim. Nossa nosso rei Omar se colocou a nossa sabedoria na memória. É por isso que aqui no, no, no livro meu está tudo explicado. Então você você vai ver, você vai ler, você vai olhar o, o homem Shabiri, Shabiri da aldeia, ele, ele é como livraria. Só ele que sabe guardar a uh, histórico tradicional como a surgiu nesse mundo. So the Yanomami Shapiri, the Yanomami shamans, they are the guardians of knowledge. And they keep this knowledge inside their heads, not inside books. Our customs, uh, our customs are very different. The Anamami people have chosen the place where they want to keep the knowledge of the earth. The forest peoples keep this knowledge here, like you keep your knowledge in machines or in cell phones. So here, here we know how not to cut down the forest. We don't need to destroy the forest to keep our knowledge. We don't need, have any use for paper. And we have learned with, with our, our king, our, our leader, Omami, the creator. He was the one who gave us the knowledge. So here in my book, you'll see all of this explained. And you'll meet the, the shapari, the shamans, and the, the shamanic spirits who live in the communities. And they are like the libraries. Uh, uh, only they really know about the traditional story of the planet, of the Earth. Então eu vou, eu vou reduzir, eu vou é, voltar. Então, Xabiri, que eu quero explicar bem um pouquinho, Xabiri. Xabiri, eu sou Xabiri. Eu sou Bagé. O meu chefe está na aldeia. Então, me ensinou. Eu sei trabalhar. Quando a pessoa está doente. Quando o mundo está querendo chover. Quando o mundo está assim, triste. Não está querendo mais chover. Muita trovão. E nós, tomar Iacuana, a gente entra em contato com ele. Não é só para cuidar de saúde, não. O homem, Xabiri Yanomami, ele, ele olha tudo. Olha o céu, olha a lua, um, o sol, o universo, machi da terra, os rios grandes. E nós estamos no perigo. O perigo está no céu. Se um dia, daqui para frente, a floresta, os indígenas morrer tudo, Vai, vai acontecer que equilibrar 
a nossas, o nosso mundo. Que é importante nós, Yanomami, ficar com saúde, protegido, respeitado e garantir a terra para o povo Yanomami. Continua a ajudar a nosso mundo, ajudar a, a lutar para proteger, para proteger a floresta, porque homem branco só gosta de destruir, desmatamento, queimar, queimar caça, queimar animais que a gente come. Não tem nenhuma pássaro aqui. Então, é por isso que é, eu estou deixando mais ou menos claro para vocês entender. Vocês vão, vocês vão a, pensar, vocês vão começar a olhar a pele da terra. Vocês vão, vão começar a olhar a floresta, que você não conhece. Você nem conhece nenhum, nenhuma, nenhuma floresta. Você conhece uma cidade. Avião, carro, elétrico. Muita gente andando na rua. Mas a floresta que cuida de nós, que dá a, de a saúde, que dá comida, que dá alegria, que dá boa, boa um, sentimento. Esse aqui é difícil de encontrar. Então, um, o livro vai começar, vocês vão ler, vocês vão começar a pensar, vocês vão começar a olhar a nossa pomal da, flore... a pomal da terra, que eu chamo pomal, porque a pomal é uma floresta. Sem a floresta, é muito quente. Sem a coração da terra, vamos morrer de doença. Então, essa eu queria deixar a minha fala dentro do seu coração, dentro do seu pensamento, para vocês não esquecer. Você sempre lembrar a minha fala, eu estou ajudando e proteger a nossa a floresta amazônica, proteger a nossa floresta terra planeta. Isso é muito importante para o nosso futuro. Outra geração, ele vai precisar. Filho de vocês, vai precisar a floresta viva. O nosso filho indígena vai precisar a floresta fique em pé, protegido para sempre. Isso é o que eu queria dizer para você. Muito obrigado. So I'm, this is, these are my final words. Um, I want to explain a bit about shamanism and the shamanic spirits. I'm a shaman and uh, the shaman who has taught me everything is in my village. And he has taught me how to cure people when they're ill and when the earth is sad. For example, when there's no rain, when there is a lot of thunder. So we, the shamans, take yakwana, a hallucinogenic snuff, and we enter into contact with the shakari, with the, the, the shamanic spirits, or the images of the shamanic spirits. We don't only do this for curing, for reasons of health. Uh, the shamans see everything. They see the sky, the moon, the sun, the universe. They can see under the earth, and they can look into the big rivers. So uh, we are here today, but in the future, if all the indigenous peoples die and the forest dies with them, the whole world will become unbalanced. It is very important that the Anomami are healthy and that they uh, protect their land and that they are respected and that the land is guaranteed so that they can continue uh, to help our world, to fight, to protect the forest. The white people only like to destroy. They burn the houses, they, they kill animals to eat them, and there are no birds here. So I want to leave you with my words. Um, I want you to think and look at the earth and start to see things, and to look at the forest, 
because you don't know my forest. Here you, li you live in the city where there are lots of planes and cars, there are a lot of people in the street, and there's electricity. However, the forest cares for us. Uh, it is like, it's the heart, it's the food, it's happiness, it gives us good feelings. Um, but it's very hard to find this. But you will read about this in the book, and you will think, and you will see, and you will think about the lungs of the earth, the Amazon forest. If we don't have these lungs of the earth, it'll become very hot. If we don't have the heart of the world within us, we will die of illness. So I want to leave you with my words, have them, keep them in your hearts and your minds, and don't forget, I'm working to protect the Amazon forest and all the plants. This is very important for the future of all generations and all peoples. Uh, your children also need the forest. They need it alive. And we need to keep it standing and protect it for everybody. Thank you very much. agreed that we thought that it, as this is launching his book here in the United States it would be nice for some of you to hear some extracts from the book and I'm sorry you've got to carry on listening to me but um, uh, but you've heard Davi so we're just going to read a few extracts and then afterwards there'll be time for you to put questions to Davi. Um, so the first extract comes from Davi's impressions when he first went to New York this was in 1991, when Survival organised a trip for him there at the height of the gold mining invasion. And, and it was one of the earliest experiences he had in a big city. <clears throat> when I arrived in New York, I was surprised that the city looked like a dense group of rocky peaks in which white people lived piled on top of each other. <laughs> At these mountains' feet, multitudes of people move very fast and in every direction, like ants. They started one way and turned around, then went the other way. They looked at the ground all the time and never saw the sky. I told myself that these white people must have built such tall stone houses after clearing all their forests and having started making merchandise in very large quantities for the first time. They probably thought, hmm, there are many of us. We are valiant in war, and we have many machines. Let us build giant houses to fill them with goods that all the other people will covet. Yet while the houses in the center of the city are tall and beautiful, those on its edges are in ruins. The people who live in those places have no food, and their clothes are dirty and torn. When I took a walk among them, they looked at me with sad eyes. It made me feel upset. These white people who created merchandise think they are clever and brave. Yet they are greedy and do not take care of the, those among them who have nothing. How can they think they are great men and find themselves so smart? They do not want to know anything about these needy people, though they too are their fellows. They reject them and let them suffer alone. They do not even look at them and are satisfied to keep their distance and call them the poor. They even take their crumbling houses from them. They force them to camp outside in the rain with their children. They must tell themselves, they live on our land, but they are other people. Let them stay far away from us, picking their food off the ground like dogs. As for us, we will pile up more goods and more weapons all by ourselves. It scared me to see such a thing. Um, the next extract uh, is a comment on, on merchandise on the accumulation of goods. 
and probably something that, that you've picked up from Davi is that in Yanomami society, it's based uh, on sharing and reciprocity. <clears throat> Their cities, this is talking about non-indigenous people. Their cities are full of big houses, filled with piles of innumerable goods, but their elders never give them to anyone. If they were really great men, shouldn't they tell themselves that it would be wise to distribute, distribute them all before they make so many more? But this never happens. When we visit the city, do we ever hear of any of the white people say, take all the machetes and pots you see? I do not want to let them get old here any longer. Share them with your people without asking anything in return and tell them about me. On the contrary, they are used to greedily hoarding their goods and keeping them locked up. In fact, they always carry many keys on them, which are for houses where they keep their merchandise hidden. They live in constant fear that it could be stolen. They only give it away sparingly in exchange for paper skins they also accumulate, thinking that they will become great men. Overjoyed, they probably tell themselves, ah, I am part of the people of merchandise and factories. I possess all these things alone. I am so clever. I am an important man, a rich man. Um, the, the next reading is about what, what the Anamami call shawara, which are the epidemics which they've experienced over the last 60 or 70 years, which have devastated the people. And, and in the huge gold mining invasion in the 80s, mid 80s and early 90s, uh, approximately 20% of the Anamami people died from disease. So this is a major issue for them as a people. But the white people's ears are deaf to the Shepherdese words. That, that's the shamanic spirits or shamans. They only pay attention to their own speeches and it never crosses their mind that the same epidemic smoke poison devours their own children. Their great men continue to send their sons-in-laws and sons to tear out, out of the earth's darkness the evil things that spread these diseases from which we all suffer. Now the breath of the burned mineral smoke has spread everywhere. What the white people call the whole world is being tainted because of the factories that make all their merchandise, their machines and their motors. Through the sky and, and the earth are vast, sorry, though the sky and the earth are vast, their fumes eventually spread in every direction and all are affected, humans, game and the forest. It is true. Even the trees are sick from it. Having become ghost, they lose their leaves, they dry up and break all by themselves. The fish also die from it in the river's soiled waters. The white people will make the earth and the sky sick with the smoke from their minerals, oil, bombs and atomic things. Then the winds and the storms will enter into a ghost state. In the end, even the Shapiri, the shamanic spirits, and Omama, the creator, their images will be affected. If the Shawara epidemic beings continue to invade our land, the shamans will all die, and no one will be able to stop the forest from turning to chaos anymore. Mashitari, the earth being, Rueri, the cloudy weather being, and Titeri, the night being, will get angry. They will mourn the shaman's death, and the forest will become other. The sky will soon be covered in dark clouds, 